Genesis. We're going to read this morning in the book of Genesis, the 50th chapter. Genesis 50, verse 15 to 21. As you are looking for, just put in the back of your mind that we're going to also read 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 18. Genesis 50, verse 15 through 21. going to read from the NIV. Verse 15, when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, what if Joseph hold a grudge against us and pay us back for all the wrong that we did to him? So they went, they, they sent word to Joseph saying, your father left this instruction before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask that to forgive your brothers the sin and the wrong they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of God of your father. When the message came to him, Joseph wept. When the message came to him, Joseph wept. Verse 18. His brothers then came and threw themselves before him. We are your slave, they say. But Joseph said unto them, Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended for it for be good to accomplish. What is now been done, the saving of many life. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them, and he spoke kindly to them. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God and Christ Jesus for you. Can we say that one more time? Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God. <laughs> Lord, we bless your mighty name. We thank you this morning. We exalt you. We thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you as you move mightily through our, throughout the service. You touch us, Father God, through the worship. And Father God, as I'm getting ready to speak to your people, I pray, Father, that you will uh, touch me and you will use me as the vessel that you want me to, Father, so I can be uh, bringing your word with boldness, so I can bring your word with sincerity so I can bring your word freely. And we pray right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Give thanks in all circumstances. There was a little boy that was asked to give uh, grace to Stu to pray for a Thanksgiving meal. And the little boy was sitting at the table his father asked him to pray for the meal, and the boy took us, he just took a few minutes. As he was observing the table, he looked at every single dish that was on that table, and everybody's waiting patiently. You know how it is. We're ready to eat, and that little boy's taking forever. And as he looked at everything, he said, Lord... I don't like the looks of it. I don't like the look of it, but I thank you for it. I'll eat it anyway. Now, I can picture the boy's mother give a look. I mean, she had spent all this time preparing this meal. And then the boy say, I don't like the look of it. The same is true in my house. My kids, no matter what you make, if it's cooked food, they're not down with it. 
But you bring anything else, it will be devoured in a second. So no matter how good the table looked with all chicken, no matter what it is, they just couldn't care less. That little boy was being honest. As he looked at the meal, he said to himself, I don't like the looks of it, Lord, but thank you anyway. This morning, I want to speak to you this morning. The title of this message says, Lord, I don't, Lord, I thank you for it anyway. I want you to take the it and personalize it in your life. I don't know what the it is for you this morning, but I want you to say it. If you can practice it with me, let's say it. Say, Lord, I thank you for it anyway. So now let's take 30 seconds. I want you to, to personalize the it. I want you to say, Lord, I thank you you and then put something in between and say anyway come on i give you 30 seconds just think of something in your life right now that need to be thankful for god because sometimes we let the one thing that is in our life take away the glory take away the thankfulness the grat the gratitude that we have toward god so you take 30 seconds come on just take some time say lord i thank you for my marriage I thank you for my children. I thank you for the job. I thank you, Lord, for my circumstance. But now let's shift it to something that will make you not even want to thank God. Maybe your life is not in a condition right now where you should be thankful to God. That's what I mean by it. I don't mean for you to put the it for the good things that are going on in your life, but I want you to thank God that it represents a trial, that it represent a circumstance, that it represent an ugliness, that it represent a rejection, that it represent something that is holding you back, that it represent the past that is holding you back, that it represent a spirit of unforgiveness, that it represent a spirit of grudge, that it represent something that is holding Holding you to be thankful to God. I don't like the look of it. He was being honest. Sometimes coming to God doesn't mean you have to fake it. I mean, we think that when we come in the presence of God, we're going to fake it. God knows everything. He knows everything. But it's not because he knows that we cannot be acting grateful. It's not because that he knows that I cannot open my mouth and be grateful to God. Come on now. Sometimes we think the person knows. No. It's because you don't want to give them credit. It's because you don't want to speak truly. You want to hold it back. Don't say they know. You speak it. You be thankful and you speak it out because gratitude is an outward expression. People can see it. They have to see it. Have you ever felt like this? You, you are in a position where you're trying to make a choice. You know that you should be thankful. It's not really that you don't want to be thankful, but you know you should be thankful. That little boy knows it. Being thankful is a sign of being mature. It's a sign of maturity. Everybody is thankful to some degree in their life. Everybody is thankful to some degree. But true thankfulness manifests itself in our life in different levels. What God has done for me, I will display my gratitude in a different way than you do. Sometimes if you see how I worship, if you see how crazy I am for God, then that ought to tell you how grateful I am. And where God took me from, what he has done for me, thankfulness manifests itself in different levels. If you were to surprise me right now with a nice gift, you buy me a nice car or a nice, something very nice, and you spend a lot of money, 
And before you give it to me, you are so excited. You can't wait to see the joy in my face when I receive it. And then you come to me and you handed me the key if it's a car. And then I take the key and I walk away. And as I walk away and I, I say, oh, thanks. And I go to the car. But all I did is say thanks. How would you feel? I am thankful. I say thanks. But is that displaying any emotion? Is that displaying any gratitude? Would you consider me grateful? Being thankful doesn't mean you are grateful. I mean, we are in a generation where everybody say thanks. Everybody say thanks. But don't confuse that with gratitude. Because gratitude goes deeper than that. Gratitude is thankfulness to the next level. And the definition of gratitude is recognizing the bonus value for favorable things or positive life experience for which we did not actively work towards or ask for. I didn't ask for it. I didn't work for it. But it's like a bonus, right? It's a bonus. A dictionary definition would be gift and win exchange. The gift outweighs the exchange. So if you give me a gift, there's nothing I can give you to make it enough. Just like salvation. There's nothing we can give back to God for the gift of salvation. We can say, thank you, Lord. But it still doesn't compensate. It doesn't weight the same as give what salvation is. Gratitude is more than just the feeling of thankfulness. Saying thanks is not grateful. Melody Beattie says, gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough. It turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance. Chaos to order, confusion to clarity. It can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home, a stranger into a friend. Gratitude makes sense of our past. Bring peace for today and create a vision for tomorrow. Now let's take a look at, a look at one person in the Bible. That not in a million years that we think that person is grateful. In fact, the chapter we just read, when we read that passage, we always associate that passage with only with forgiveness. Because it says, Joseph said, what you meant for evil and God used it for good. So we always take this passage as just in a way to coincide it with a forgiving attitude. Joseph is not, wasn't just somebody. We always think like he was someone that was handed a blessing. That God came to him at an early age and said, Joseph, I am going to bless you. I give you a vision and you're going to be the head and everybody's going to bow to you. We always think of Joseph as this little brat who has everything handed to him. As a young man, he was sold into slavery by his brother. He spent years and years in jail for crime he did not commit. That's the way, same way you feel when somebody lies about you. You know it hurts more when you didn't do something and somebody say you did it. It hurts more. There are things you say, I wish I did it. Maybe I know. At least I know I did it. <laughs> They lie about him. He was thrown into jail for a crime he did not commit. He had everything taken away from him. He was forgotten. He was abundant. He was lie about. And yet, while we know this arrogant youngster, the only thing we can think of Joseph that he has ever did is being arrogant with his little brothers to show off how he was going to be better than them, how they were going to bow to him. I mean, sometimes I always say to myself, he deserved it a little bit. 
I mean, he deserved it. You cannot stand here and brag and say, how I'm going to bow to you. And I'm your big brother. So you can see when he was a little boy, that's the only thing you can say that was negative about Joseph that he did. But everything else he didn't deserve. But still, he had every reason to be bitter of life. Joseph had every single reason in the book to grow up to be a bitter person. But still he didn't. Let's take a look at verse 20 once again. It says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done. Have you ever looked at your past and say, what is being done now? I am so thankful that God had put me in that situation back then. He said, everything is done to accomplish what has been done now, to save many lives. That was a sentence we can only say that only a mature person will say. Someone who's not holding a grudge. He's not saying it didn't happen. He's not saying it didn't hurt. That's not what he's saying. He's not saying, because remember, he started by saying, you intended to harm me. Oh, you were trying to hurt me. Joseph said like it is. He wanted, you wanted to harm me. Joseph could not let his brother take away his gratefulness toward God. When you put it out there like this, you're just not letting the enemy take away your gratefulness. You were not. He could not let his brother take away his gratefulness. Sometimes we let our pain, our suffering, all these things we bring through, take away giving gratitude to God. This is all it's about, folks. The enemy wants to take away your gratitude. If he keeps you busy with life's trials, when do you have time to thank God? If you're going to wait for the right moment when everything is okay, <laughs> when are you really going to be thankful? I mean, let's look at how, how long we've been in this whole coronavirus thing. How long has that been? Yeah. So if you're going to wait for that to be over, are you going to wait for that to be over to start saying, I am so grateful, Lord. That I am still standing here today. I am so grateful, Lord, that through it all, you have kept me. Thus far, you have kept me. Are you going to have an attitude of gratitude this morning? Are you going to let this long journey that was painful, people lost their job, people contracted the virus, people are sick, depressed, are you going to let that define your gratitude today? Then you're going to just wait forever. Uh, we might as well sit here and wait forever because nobody knows when it's going to be over. But one thing that we know, through it all, he has been faithful. <laughs> through it all, he has been faithful. Come on, say to yourself, too much credit to the enemy. Too much credit to my trials. Too much credit to my circumstance. Too much credit to the situation. I won't give too much credit to those things. But if I spend another minute, I'm going to spend it praising and grateful to God. Because he has kept me that far. He has held me that far. He has held my children. He has held my spouse. He has held my relationship. No matter what I've been through, though I lost my job, but I'm still standing here today. Though I lost everything, but I still have a song in my heart. That song comes from a spirit of gratitude. It didn't come from how my past was like, but it came from to a realization that I serve a mighty God, that I stand here today. I stand on the ground of gratefulness today. Don't be giving too much credit to the enemy. 
Uh, you've been kept busy the past eight months to be giving credit to. I mean, you've been kept busy. You, you worried. Uh, you can't even go out without even worried. You so scared going to the supermarket. Somebody sneeze, you jump. I mean, no matter what happened around you, you start like, whoa, you know. You don't trust nobody right now, even the person next to you right now. <laughs> you can't give too much credit. What this story teaches us, number one, it teaches us that Joseph taught us that our thankfulness is not dependent on the past. Number one, our thankfulness, doesn't, it doesn't depend on the past. The past for Joseph brings harsh memories. I mean, when he think of what they put him through, if you're going to think of the past, you're going to be so depressed, uh, bitter, yeah. I mean, you won't even know where to start because you're going to have a reason to. The past will give you every single reason to not be thankful. For him, the past was sour. Nothing could completely erase those years of imprisonment. Nothing could change the fact that his brother hid him so that they wanted to kill him. But Joseph was thankful even though in spite of it, he proved it by not showing any grudges to them. As we put our focus on what had happened to us in the past, we missed the opportunity to be grateful toward God's today. The more time you spend in the past, you are wasting time. Time you can be grateful to God. The enemy will always want to drag you back to the past. Joseph said, no, 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 no. I'm not going to let my past hold me back to show my gratefulness toward God. In Genesis 50, verse 17, it says, Joseph wept when they spoke unto him. When his brother said a word to him, the brother was so afraid after his father died, they said, oh, my God. The only fear that maybe Joseph had is for my dad. <laughs> so this man has that much power, and our dad passed away, we are doomed. So they call a servant. They send somebody to, to send word to Joseph. Uh, they cooked up the story because they say, our father said, and I said, Will, we don't know. We don't know if that's what the father said. The Bible says it. I'm going to tell you right now, it looks like a cook-up story. Because they are so afraid, they say, our father said, this is the will of my father. It wasn't a written will. It was a verbal will. So they send a word to Joseph and say, our father say, please forgive your brothers. They didn't know what they were doing. Forgive them. Don't hold it against them. Because they fear that Joseph now can just flip the coin and say, now let's see how much it hurt. Let me show you how I felt when you threw me in that pit. And because you threw me in that pit, and my life is never the same. I got lied on. I got thrown in prison. It's all your fault because it's the law of consequence, right? It's all your fault. Because you started it, now look where my life is because I have been hurt. Sometimes things happen to us, and we, everything else that happened, we blame that person from 15, 20 years ago. That person took you to the, to the house when you had nowhere to go. And one day he kicked you out, but all you remember is that he kicked you out. <laughs> you don't remember when they took you in. <laughs> Instead of giving thanks and say, I thank God, if you didn't throw me out, I would never bought my own house today. If you didn't throw me out, I would have never worked harder and become who I am today. 
But you let that moment that you get kicked out take away the praise that God deserves. Because you don't think God was behind it. You don't think God didn't allow it. But what had happened to you, God let it happen so he can be for good. The person might intend to hurt you, but God let it happen so you can take a step further. As you stayed in that person's house, you probably would never own your own apartment. You would never know what it's like to grow up in your life. You would have been a baby drinking milk every single day because you will be cozy up in the back room. You will never know what it's like to have your own house. But instead of thanking God, you stood there and then so unforgiving of that person. Oh, when you threw me out, this happened to me. My life is never the same. I suffered. So what? You think God didn't see you? You think God abandoned you all this time? Look at where you are today and explain, explain that story to me again. Look where you are now and go back and see if God made a mistake with you. But the Bible say when Jesus, when Joseph heard those words, he wept. I mean, I say to myself, Joseph wept. If you read that story, he wept, I believe, seven times in that story, at least seven times. The Bible says he wept when his father dies, and when he first met his brother, he heard about Benjamin. He wept. But when he wept on verse 17, when you look at the reason he wept, he didn't weep because his father died, because he wept in, in Genesis 15, verse 1, 50, verse 1, that's when his father passed away. The Bible says he wept. There was that time he wept because there's something that Joseph realized. Joseph realized something they didn't understand. When he hear the story, how they feel pity, they feel bad for themselves. He wept because he realized they didn't get it. They didn't get it. They didn't get it because what they did. They didn't get it because they are sitting here feeling guilty. They didn't realize how much good they did for me. Although it hurt, although I went through all these, but he wept because he realized they didn't get it. If they only knew, because he said, I'm not going to let them take away my gratitude toward God. Because Joseph wanted to give God the glory in that moment. That those tears that was falling, that was the tears of, of, the, of him realizing how much his brothers didn't really understand. It wasn't really sadness, but it was more of a way, you don't get it, man. You, you sit here feeling pity for me. But you don't see what God has done through me? You don't see my position today? I wouldn't be here had you not done what you did. Joseph reminded them of his disbelief that God and his sovereignty has let all these things happen for good in all their life. And his amazing grace and providence overruling the redemptive plans. It's not what they did. It's what God did with what they did. It's like they handed God a tool. God is always looking for something to use. Whatever just happened to you, just look at it as one more tool in the hand of God. Number one, Joseph taught us that our thankfulness is not dependent on our past, but it also taught us that our thankfulness is not dependent on the present. The present. If Joseph had not been mindful of what God had done, he could have taken revenge on his brothers right now. Thankfulness, what it does, we're not dependent on the present. Joseph is in the driver's seat now, right? He's in the driver's seat. He can say, throw all these men in prison. He can say, do whatever you want to do. He had all the power and the resources to make the life a living hell. As we put our focus on the present situation, we miss the opportunity to be grateful. God took you. When I see that, I, I, I'm taken back to see why God chose Joseph. 
You know, God chooses us according to our heart. You know that. If God knows your, God knows your heart, not if he knows your heart, but if in your heart, he knows that you would have been somebody today that when you get in that position, you will be so inflamed with pride, you probably wouldn't be, wouldn't be chosen. God chooses. He chooses us because he knows our heart. Certain thing God chooses us for is because he knows that he chooses you because you can endure the trial you're going to go through to get there. But when you get there, you won't be so big. You won't get so big. Your head won't get so big. You won't be so conceited inside to the point where you cannot give him glory and you will not be able to forgive. Those who he used throughout the journey to take you there. Because he's going to use people to bless you. He's going to use people to hurt you. And some people are going to hurt you more than others. Maybe it's a relationship you had that that person so destroy you mentally, physically. And then you find yourself, you can't let it go. And you always, every time something happens, you just bring that person's name. And that person is having some, eating some nice chicken and grill and all that, and they don't even know what you're doing. And you sit there and calling on their name. And they just, they moved on. They don't even know what they did. In fact, sometimes some people hurt you. They don't even see what they did to you. You're just crying about it. And they hurt you so bad. It's so obvious how the people can see it, but for them, they don't even realize how bad they hurt you. They tell you, suck it up again, <laughs> because they think they're helping you. And maybe they are. Maybe they are. Maybe sometime you need to hear an honest conversation. Maybe somebody needs to tell you off sometime, then you just get it sometime. But don't just use it as a way to hold you back. And then when you get there, when God blesses you in the presence, don't let it hold you back. Or you're going to repay evil for evil. Or you feel like, oh, yeah, I'm going to show you what it hurts. Like somebody says something that hurts you, and then you can't wait. And, or maybe you didn't think of a quick answer right away, and then you spend a whole week uh, you thinking about it. <laughs> and you can't let it go, and you just, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you call everybody. And then now, by the end of the week, and you form that perfect response. And then, and then you just stand right in the church parking lot. <laughs> uh, you can't wait for that person. You're talking to somebody else and your eyes is right there waiting for that person to come. And as soon as you saw them, you pretended and you just throw it out there in the air. You know they're going to get it. But you didn't say it directly. But you throw it so they can get it. So you, you just can't because you feel like if I don't tell them, I won't feel good. Because you carrying that thing. You just got to let it go. Or maybe something you know that's going to hurt the person. That can destroy them. That word, you know that you, when you say it, you say it, you're going to shut them up. They will never say anything else to you ever again. And you're going to fix it. You are a fixer. You are God's holy agent. Don't let the present destroy God's plan for your life. Our thankfulness is not depending on the present. Where we are today, where God put us, should not keep us from being thankful. Sometimes when we didn't have, and now we have, and because we have now, we forget to be thankful. Because we're so busy, we're a big shot. You know, we don't have time. We can't, we just don't even have time for God. We're so busy. Don't let the blessing keep you from being thankful. But number three, Joseph taught us that our thankfulness is mindful of the future. Whenever you've been thankful to God, you are mindful of the future because this is what you're doing. You are taking the present. You, you, you know what the past was like. 
You decide to let it go. And you know what the presence is like. You don't let the present dictate anything. But you are focusing on the future. Because as you've been faithful, it doesn't matter what it looks like right now. I don't like the look of it, but Lord, thank you anyway. I don't like what I'm seeing right now, but Lord, thank you anyway. See, this is faith. I don't like it, but thank you anyway, because I know you have a plan for me. I know you will prosper me. I know I cannot die in this pit. I know I cannot die in the wilderness, but God, thank you anyway. Oh, I don't have AC right now in my car, but God, thank you for that car anyway. Oh, I don't know who I'm speaking to right now. Uh, you can have the best house. Can I tell you right now? You can have the biggest and best house, and then the way the AC broke, uh, you don't want to be in that house. I don't like what's going on right now, but God, thank you anyway. Can somebody say it with me? I don't like what's going on right now in my life. But God, thank you anyway. Can, I, can somebody say it one more time? I don't like it what's going on. I don't like the look of it right now. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look delicious. Oh, I don't like it. But God, thank you anyway. You know, that's one thing I make the enemy cringe, right? That's what you're doing. I'm making you making him cringe right now. He just can't help it right now because he knows your situation. Oh, he knows what you're going through. Oh, he knows your business, I said. Oh, he knows everything that's happening in your house. Oh, he knows the size of your big account right now. He knows you can't focus right now as you sit here because you worry. Today's what, the first Yes, you are it right now. But say, God, my bank account don't look good right now. <laughs> but thank you anyway. What is holding you back today? What is holding you back today to be thankful? Is it your past? Do you need to forgive someone? Do you need to let go of something that's dragging you? Do you let, need to let go of a past sin? But I'm here to tell you that it's been forgiving. The blood of Christ already take care of that. So you don't have to worry about that. If it's the past, don't worry about it. Because you are a new creature now. Is it your current situation right now that's holding you back? But just reminded that God is bigger. You would thank God anyway because God is bigger. Keep your mind focused on where God is taking you. Because he's faithful. He's so faithful. He said, give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God. This is the will of God. I choose to glorify him. I choose to thank him. Always. I'm not going to let my past, my present, hold me back. Because I'm going to give God thanks in all circumstances. All. All. I... I the dictionary can't help me with all. All is all, right? All, everything, all circumstances. So no matter what your circumstance here today, I'm here to tell you, do not let me hold you back. Because when he's holding you back to give thanks, do you know that when you exercise giving thanks to others, to your brothers, to your family members, to people close to you, it's an exercise. It's training so you can learn to be thankful to God. If you cannot be thankful for the thing that's happening around you, you cannot be thankful to God. 
you practicing. God put you on this earth so you can live a life on this earth that's going to show you what it's going to be like in heaven. So don't try to jump to the heavenly places when you're not even be thankful on this earth. Because there's life on this earth that's going to blind you from thanking God. The trial on this earth, that's what's going to stop you from being thankful to God. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift. Come on, somebody lift your hands. Lift up your hands. You might not have a reason to lift up your hands. By the look of it, you might not have a reason to. But this is exactly why you need to do it. It's not about the look of it. You don't thank God. You don't be grateful to God because of what thing looks like. But you are grateful to God because of who he's been in your life. And because of who he has been, I have the confidence right now to know that he is right now in my current circumstance. He would not leave me nor forsake me. I don't like the look of it. I don't like the look of it. You can be honest with God. Yes, you can be honest with God. There's no one less like him. There's no comforter like him. There's no provider like him. There's no healer like him. There's no protector like him. There's no prince of peace like him. There's no one else like him. So as you stand here today, there's no one else like him. No one deserves the glory more than he does. No one else you should be more grateful toward but him. He is on the throne. As long as he is on the throne, I will still praise him. I will still give him thanks in my current circumstance. He said, give thanks in all circumstance because it's the will of God. So this morning, do not let your circumstance rob you. Do not let it rob you to be grateful to God. Because gratefulness comes from the inside. Not just saying thanks like everybody else does. Not just doing it like our culture. But we are saying thanks to God with a grateful heart. Because we know what he's done for us. We know what he's doing for us. And we know what he will do for us. So let's have a grateful heart. Because God deserves it. God bless you this morning.